Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today I wanted to do something kind of fun with Python and Pygame. And for a long time, when I was young, I had wanted to program a Tangram program. If you're not familiar with Tangrams, these are some images from Wikimedia Commons. It's a seven-piece Chinese puzzle. You can see the pieces here in these images. And these sort of shadowy images or, or outline images are puzzles. and the idea is to take the seven pieces and arrange them so that you get the shape. So I just started programming this, and right now all I've worked on is moving and rotating a single shape. So the shape is uh, called the shape class. It's a subclass of sprite, and I'll show you what it looks like. So I also found this background image on Wikimedia Commons because I wanted to see if it will look good with a shadow under the piece to sort of indicate that it's been picked up. All right, so that, that's movement. That's pretty straightforward. This is a rotation control, and you're going to see it jump when I start rotating because the code for drawing this and locating it on the shape is really sketchy, and I haven't fixed that yet. So it's picked up, you can see, but because I'm clicking in the rotation control, I'm rotating, and yeah, it jumps when I start rotating. That's, you know, that's the basic idea, and you can move it around and, oops, was it quite in the rotation control? Rotate it again. Okay, so I want to kind of put it back to where it started and talk about how do you do that rotation. The first way I did it used um, a little bit of vector arithmetic, uh, cross, cross multiplication of vectors to determine whether we were moving clockwise or counterclockwise, and that way worked great. It just wasn't particularly intuitive to me. So I wanted to do it in a way that was more intuitive to me because I think it's easier to write and debug code that makes sense to you. But um, I mean, the other code made sense, but I had to accept some things that were intuitive, as I said. Before I talk about how I'm doing the rotating, just to mention how this works overall in terms of events. So on a mouse down, if it's on the shape, then the shape determines if it's within the rotation control or not. If it's not within the rotation control, I still have the mouse button down, and now I'm dragging. So if it's being moved, then on a mouse motion event, it just moves itself in the rotation control in the shadow. If I do mouse down on the shape, and the shape determines the mouse down is within a rotation control, then on mouse motion, so I still have the mouse button down, so it's a drag. On mouse motion, it rotates. Okay, so now let's just... I'm going to try to just sort of draw a little bit of the trigonometry so that this makes sense. So I'm going to try to draw sort of a light-colored coordinate system. So the shape rotates around its center, and maybe you have games where you would like to rotate something around its center. That was pretty straight for me. I'm not good at drawing with the mouse. Okay, that was more like me. All right, so please pretend these are straight lines. Um, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, three, uh, sorry, 270 degrees. And how do we figure out the angle? So what we want is basically, let me switch to black. Oops. We're going to take where the user mouse is down. And then we're going to take, while they're holding the mouse down, at each mouse motion, let's let's say to here, but each mouse motion is actually probably going to be pretty close to the last one. But let's say to here, or, you know, maybe it's out here, or maybe it's in here. It doesn't matter, because we're interested in the angle from the center. Okay. So what we want is to know what that angle is. I'll call it theta. Let's see if I can draw theta. Okay. We want to know what that angle is, because that's how much we're going to rotate the shape by. And we're going to add that basically to the prior rotation. So each time there's a mouse motion, I take the original image of the shape, which I have saved in the sprite as the raw image, and I rotate that. And that's because if we keep rotating the shape, then the image eventually degrades. So to keep the shape looking good, I always rotate the raw image. So the problem that we want to solve is finding the angle of the original click, or the vector that joins the origin with the click. So we need that angle, and then we want to find the angle of where the mouse is during the mouse motion, so that angle, so we know 
exactly how much we want to rotate the shape by. It's, it's this amount, theta. That's how much we want to rotate the shape by. And if they then, you know, eventually go down here, then this becomes theta, and that's the amount that we're going to rotate the shape by, because we're always starting from the original shape. Now, if I then release the mouse button, and now my shape is, you know, it's pointed like that, more or less, I save that rotation. So next time, well, we're going to have to pretend they moved it too. Next time, they click here and say they rotate to there, we're calculating this theta and we're adding it to that rotation that we already had. So that's how that works. Let's, let's do a new one of these. Okay, so imagine the point is out here. So this is really the only problem we have to solve is at what angle is that point? So, you know, we draw our line. <laughs> oh no. Let's pretend this is our point. We draw our line, and we know that that is a, a y distance from the origin, and that is an x distance from the origin. So um, if this is x prime y prime, and this is x y, obviously it's not the origin, it's just the center of our shape, which we can easily get from the bounding rectangle. Then this is y prime minus y, and this is x prime minus x. So um, x prime minus x is, is going to be positive, right, in our, in our coordinate plane. Um, y prime minus y is going to be negative because, you know, the y increases this way in pi game. This is 0, 0 up here. So this one's going to be negative. All right, and we want to find the angle theta. Okay, so we know that tangent of theta, remember your Sopitoa, is going to be opposite over adjacent. So let's just call this this whole thing, um, I don't know what to call it. We'll just continue with y prime. I want to call it y, but it's the y amount, uh, y prime minus y over x prime minus x. So that's a tangent of theta. So if, if we want to get theta, when we already know the x and the y, then we use the arc tangent, or a tan, of y prime minus y over x prime minus x. This is so ugly, I apologize. Okay, and that will give us theta. Great. That works great for all of the triangles that you can draw between 0 and 90. Um, the problem is that uh, we're going to sort of get these alternating values as we move around our through the different quadrants we're going to get these alternating values so um, they're just going to be between 0 and 90 and um, this one will be negative this one will be positive this will be negative this will be positive so they're going to be two that are negative two that are positive so that's not really telling us what quadrant we're in but this problem has already been solved it was solved in the 60s and so there is another function that we can use called a tan 2. Well, we pass in something a little different to a tan 2. We pass in both of these. We don't divide them. So if we use a tan 2, instead of getting a value between 0 and 90, we get a value between 0 and 180. Exactly what we want. Positive on one side and negative on the other. So we will know exactly where we are based on that number that we get. And so we're going to use a tan 2. I should put a comma there. It's not a division. It's a comma with a tan 2. So we're going to use a tan 2. And there are just a couple of little caveats. You might have noticed that, like, for example, here, we can't divide by this if x and uh, x prime are the same. So in other words, if we're right here or right here, and we will be if we're dragging around in a circle, there's a good chance we're going to hit that y-axis, right? So we do have to um, take account of that special case. Okay, so we can look at the calculating the angle first, because that's what we were just talking about. And oh, actually, I have some print statements in there, um, which I'm, I could leave those because they're illustrative. So that's from when we were in it before. So let's see, what are we printing? Um, we're printing the a tan 2. So that's what degrees, this is called twice. This is called when I first mouse down. And then it's called to calculate the angle as I do the mouse motion. Okay. 
So we're going to see um, a tan 2, which will give us a number between 1 and 180, or negative, or sorry, 0 and 180, or negative 180 and 180, I guess. Um, and then the a tan, um, and we're only going in here if we didn't already determine that we're on the y-axis. Okay, so the first one is the a tan 2, and the second one is a tan. So you can see a tan 2 that this angle is around 153 degrees. That makes sense. It's it's getting close to the 180 axis there, the x-axis, um, but the a tan is negative 26 degrees. And then as we move down and get down to 180, there we go. We got to 180 and 0. And now for a tan 2, we're in the negatives. And a tan is uh, a tan's just going to stay between zero and ninety. Okay, so I'll leave that code in there, the printing code. Um, so just to make these a little bit shorter, I did put y one. I, I did name some new variables, and it looks like I didn't annotate them. That's, that's terrible. Well, um, x one y one is the center of the shape. X two y two is the mouse location, and those are just um, the location is passed in the center of the shape is just part of the sprite. We get it from its rect. So then the uh, we check first to make sure we're not going to divide by zero. Okay, so if y2 is less than y1, we're, we're, we're up in the rotation. If y2 is greater than y1, we're down in the rotation. And that's only if uh, we're on the x-axis. Then we're either 90 or negative 90. Um, and otherwise, we just do a tan 2 and pass it in, and we get the angle that we can use. So as you saw, like... 150, roughly around 150 is where we're starting. And so when, when there's a click, if it's on the control, then I just grab that start rotation angle because we want to calculate the difference um, by getting the arc tan and then subtracting if we have already rotated uh, what our starting rotation is. And if we have a mouse motion, then I'm setting the rotation to the new angle minus the starting angle. And that starting angle, again, that's what we set when we had a mouse down. And then on mouse up, we just reset those variables, except for the self-rotation, because now we're at that new rotation. The shadow and the rotation control are the shape's responsibility um, to keep in sync with itself. So when it rotates or moves, um, it just tells them to rotate and move as well. It's really pretty straightforward, I think. Um, I did write this a few different ways, as I mentioned. I even wrote it with just a plain old arc tan and did the adjustment myself, just because I really did want to understand how this works. But I hope that this is kind of an interesting project for you, or fun, as well. And as I continue to work on the game, if, if I solve other little problems that I haven't created videos about before, I will continue to create videos of the interesting problems in this game. As always, I'll upload this code to my GitHub repo, and I hope that you have fun with it.